And now we've finished our front face with the fingers and we're going to continue with a design. And we'll try a couple ways to do this. So I'll do a design that is a cut, uh, but you can always modify this to become simply an etch, uh, as I'll show later. So we'll click Shoot and Cut. It wants a plane, of course, the front plane. And I'm going to go to the front view. And it's not required, uh, but I'm going to replace the center line just for my orientation so I can see where what I'm designing is relative to the center line. So that's a, <coughs> I'm hitting a escape now to get out of that command. Uh, you can see that I utilize the origin as one of my points, and that's one of the advantages of doing the rectangle based on a single center point as you have it. Okay, so we're going to be using the spline feature, which is a powerful um, but somewhat confusing uh, command. Okay, so let me show you a couple examples of what you can do with spline. Uh, I clicked there, and there, and there. So that's a th three-point spline. Uh, and three-point splines usually have pretty simple geometry, uh, a constant curvature, no inflection points. You can see that you can make it develop an inflection point, but that's because the mouse is going off to a fourth point. And if I click there, it'll maintain that. If I hit Escape right now, which I'm about to do, it simply goes back to the three points and you have a constant curvature. A four-point spline, you can have inflection points. Oh, so notice that um, it's often trying to find these inference lines. And usually when you're doing free-form design, you don't want those because it will try to maintain that inference later. So we're going to try to avoid those. Uh, so here's a four-point spline, three, and here's the fourth point. So if I do my fourth point, I can have a nice shape with some inflection points. Now if you go on and try to do a fifth point, uh, your shapes can of course become more complex. They can also become harder to make um, smooth and aesthetic. So for example, um, if I add a fifth point here, and then another one here, and then another one here, um, so that's five, six, seven points. It becomes harder to make the shape smooth. So in general with splines, it's better to um, stick to roughly four points, maybe five, or have the points spaced far apart so that the spline that goes through it has a chance to become smooth, as you can see kind of what I'm doing here. And of course, if you want to, you can reconnect them. Okay, so that's just an example of splines. You notice that those points that I clicked are indeed control points, and you can move those if you want to, uh, as we'll see in a bit. Um, so I'm going to undo this just so that I can make a real spline. Okay, now let's try this again. I'm just going to do the leaf design like I did in the example box. Okay, so here's the beginning of the stem. And then the leaf's going to be here. And then I have a point to the leaf, let's say, that's there. Now, if you want a sharp corner in a spline, uh, that's hard to do because you can see that it's trying to always maintain a smooth curvature through every point. Uh, one way to do a sharp point is to add a lot of little points here. Uh, I find that doesn't work so good. Uh, it's much better just to finish the spline, so I'm going to hit escape to stop it there, and then just begin a new spline at that point. And now you can maintain a sharp point. So there's the, uh, let's see, the leaf will be like that, and let's say that's there. And now to do a stem, I am going to have to have some more points than just four. So one there. Now I'm not worrying about the fact that it's um, going curving like that because I'm going to add another point which will eliminate that curvature. You can see right there. Okay, so that's the uh, fewest number of points I know how to do to maintain to make that shape. And I hit Escape. Now you can adjust these points. So I can move, for example, this point in 
make the stem a little longer, make the stem a little thinner. Now you see I can move the points, I can also control the local slope, and that's what that gray line is. So if I grab on the gray line, that little point at the end of the gray line, now the point of the, uh, the control point is staying in the same location, but I'm controlling the local slope. And so there's uh, something to achieve a sort of a stem feature. And you can control all of these if you want to. Uh, I would be cautious with them because you can uh, easily end up messing up your smooth geometry if you overdo it. Uh, so it's usually best just to move the point. But if you don't get what you need by moving the point, certainly, uh, oop, see there, I just did one. So I moved, put it back where it was. The point is there. Okay. And I'm going to move that in a little bit, make the leaf a little bit smaller. Maybe I'm going to change the slope a little, bring it in a little, but you can see that it becomes awkward. That's what I mean about if you do too much with the slope, it can ruin the smoothness of the design. So we're going to bring that in a little more. And I won't mess too much with this. Um, to get the design really the way you want it, it often does take a long time. Uh, but for this tutorial, we'll move on. Okay, so let's say that's my design and I want to pattern it and mirror it. So we're going to do a circular pattern uh, around some kind of a pivot point down here. You have two choices. You could use the pattern feature here uh, in the sketch and we could also do it as a feature. So uh, if you did it in the sketch it would be looking for a point. So I'll just open this up. Uh, right here in the blue box it needs a um, a point to pivot about. So you would have to create a point, uh, for example, that point. So I think it'll populate that. Uh, let's see. There and yep, there we go. And let's see, it's looking for the direction of it. So right now it's in the clockwise direction. And that's the location of the center. This is how many degrees of. Um, pivot, let's try 70, and then it's looking for entities to pattern, so I'll do that and that. So I held the shift key down to select both of those, and you can see it's doing this um, pattern like this. You could correct that to say 65 degrees to pull it in, or 60 to fit it on there. And if I were working with this more, I'd make my leaves smaller so that I'm not cutting out so much. Uh, so that would be the method within the sketch, and that would be fine. Oh, you see, I need to, I would need to work with this more because it's, um, it's pivoting in it and moving it into the finger space. So the way to fix that would be to move the whole, um, these two first entities. Uh, now, there's a difference between circular sketch pattern, as I'm going to show you here. So this is still selected, so I could just grab this and move this. Or I thought I could. Okay, let's try again. Let me select that. Now I'm going to grab this and move this. But you can see when I move this in the circular sketch pattern, it does not update these. So if you want that, then I would, I mean, if you want that kind of control, then I would work within the sketch pattern. But uh, usually you don't want that. So I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to hit a undo. Undoing, there we go. Um, I am going to move this up a little bit because you can see uh, the pivot action is going to be a little off if it's as low as it is. And it kind of makes sense to center it within the, uh, the face, center it vertically. Okay. You can also rotate this entity. Often you'll draw something and it's not quite at the right rotation. The way you would do that would be to go to Tools, Tools, Sketch Tools, and then Rotate. So now, since these are already selected when I started that, it populated automatically. It's looking for a center of rotation. I think I'll just use that point. And now it's looking for how much do you want to rotate. Um, the, typically, the default is counterclockwise. So I'm just going to hit minus 5 degrees. And so that's a clockwise. And that'll be set up, I think, nicely to both mirror and rotate. Okay. Or to, to pattern. So. 
I think at this point I'm going to go out of my sketch tool and look at the cutout that I get. So exit sketch and now we're in the cut extrude if you remember we were there uh, five minutes ago. So uh, through all it would go through the entire um, thickness. If you wanted to do just a, um, a design on the surface uh, you could simply say blind and then go a very small distance. So here you could say 0.01 and that would do, I'll do a check so you can see what it looks like, that would do a very slight cut through but it would still have the pattern and when you laser it we can identify those lines as being uh, etch lines instead of cut lines. So I'm going to change that so I'm going to right click and then edit feature and I'm going to change this to through all to make a hole and check and there's my hole. Okay. Now this is the other way to do the pattern. So uh, I've already got this selected and, so, and that's often helpful because when I go into pattern I can say this kind of pattern. This is a feature pattern as opposed to a sketch pattern. So it's patterning the entire cut extrude feature which includes the sketch within it. Okay, so once again circular pattern. Uh, this is the pattern axis. Okay, so for an axis you need a line segment that is perpendicular to the surface you're working on or the this, um, the axis of rotation of the pattern. So that would be a good choice. Uh, that would be a fine choice. You could use um, the other one of those. I'll use that one. Okay, and you can see what it's about to do. And it's already populated with the choices of degrees that I chose before. So that looks like a little too much cutness. Um, so I'll just do a simple one like that too much area removed. And um, like I said, if I were doing this officially or for myself, um, for a real design, it would probably make these cuts a lot smaller. So <clears throat> it wasn't so dominant. Okay, so we have our pattern and it looks reasonable. Uh, it's not too close to an edge. It's certainly not penetrating an edge. So let's okay that. And now we're ready to mirror that about the center line. Now the mirror feature in Sketch works differently than the mirror feature, uh, sorry, the mirror command in Sketch works differently than the mirror command in Feature. So we're in Feature right now, you can see. There was a Sketch um, mirror. For that you need a, uh, a simple line segment or a center line. When you're mirroring a feature, it's going to look for a plane. And so let we'll see what this is about in a minute. There's mirror. So I've already got circular pattern selected, so it's going to auto-populate it. You can see features to, to mirror. It's already populated. It's looking for a face or a plane in this case. So either you need to create a plane or you use one that's already there. And fortunately, uh, this is um, one of the small advantages <coughs> of starting a square, if you remember, about the center point, is that there will be a plane here. And this, I'll show you how to find it. So we use uh, this little plus to open up that menu. There are three planes, the front plane there, the top plane, and the right plane. And these are, a these are always a part of every part. And you can see that right plane is my perfect mirror plane. So if I simply click this, it's going to populate that right there. And voila, I have my mirrored uh, feature. Okay, and so we can click check, and there we have our pattern. Um, if I were working this myself, I'd do a lot of refining, but it's um, we're getting pretty close. Okay, let me show you some alternate ways to do it. Uh, let's see, if you wanted, like I said, to have this not be a cut all the way through, that's simple to change back, blind, 0.01, check, And there it is, it's just um, line segments. And you can see that it updated all six of them. And that if I did go back and change something to 
this first one, that change would be propagated across all six. So that's different than the sketch uh, method of doing the rotating uh, pattern and the mirroring. And in the next video, I'll show how to import a drawing, uh, even starting with a JPEG or some kind of a picture file, and turn it into a design on the face.